it's a, it's a privilege to be here at um, Tech presenting my work. I have to say that this is my first time uh, making a presentation in English, so please forgive me if I sound a little nervous. It's because I am. Um, <laughs> and okay, the main purpose of this uh, research is to talk about people, either living or dead, and their relationship with space, machinery, and production. Uh, this is probably a problem in my country. But um, industrial archaeologists tend to focus on, on the worker, the individual who produces, uh, and forget how these people left personal marks on their works, workplaces. These marks do not originate structural changes. They are small notes, drawings, uh, photos, um, stories, and scars left on the buildings or on the people themselves. As far as possible, this, this work uses many different sources and methodologies as I hope to demonstrate. Um, <clears throat> the places and examples I'm going to tell you about are set in Portuguese territory, which is where I'm located. Um, the selection of places does not obey um, the geographic logic uh, or an attempt to cover the entire Portuguese territory yet, of course. These are just industrial historical places with evidence. Um, Bear in mind, please, that Portugal was uh, quite modest in the industrialization process, which can only be perfectly observed by the second half of the 19th century. Uh, the evidence is scarce and broken. Um, when heritage technicians or archaeologists enter a recently used factory space, that place has most of the times already been cleaned and sanctioned by the workers themselves or ordered to do so. Normally, most of the, the traces uh, that indicate daily lives of workers in these places are removed. <coughs> erased or simply discarded. Um, in these two examples, it is possible to see how all the things that workers had in the wall of a workshop and an area of lockers was ingressed from what was there. Uh, these traces were usually photographs, photo calendars, advertisements, political propaganda stickers, religion objects, or lucky <coughs> charms. Uh, why are these places clean? Uh, is, is this intentional? Is it possible that workers do not want people outside the factory environment to browse on their things in personal life. It seems unlikely that former works have uh, an agenda against researchers uh, wanting them to focus only on factory processes and not what workers link external life to factory grounds. So why does this happen? Um, the explanations are several. In some places, workers were ordered to do it, while in others, it was their own choice. An example can be provided by an old fat oil factory in Lisbon, where an attempt to remove photographs uh, from the walls has failed. Uh, when archaeologists entered the site and <coughs> had to, to do an architectural survey of the place, the walls revealed that such posters were once scattered all over, all over the building. Uh, usually the first to be removed are pictures of women, possibly trying to conserve some morality. <coughs> At the Robinson Cork factory in Porto Alegre, which opened in the second half of the 19th century and was operating for most of the 20th century, something even more interesting happened. After the place was transformed into a, a museum, several of the old workers visited the factory and the places where they used to work. Some of them, years after their last shift, still tried to pull and torn the calendars and posters that survived, the majority displaying naked women. Political propaganda also occupied an important role in this area. I have to remember that Portugal was under dictatorship until 1974, and most of these workers were able to involve themselves in politics in the end of that period and discuss it openly in their working spaces. Religious images are rare, especially because there is mostly the woman's business when present day, uh, uh, pr uh, when present, they seem to have more of a uh, protected and devotion proposal. I have these representations of workers' uh, lives being ignored by archaeologists in Portugal because they are located in the places that archaeologists usually ignore since they are not directly related to the industrial process. The, guard, the guard's house, the locksmith shop, the carpentry shop, the meals area, or the entrance where the time register is located. In Portugal, most of the researchers that they give themselves to the study of industrial heritage, often forget that in these places there were feelings, personal or collective situations, uh, which reflected on the private and social life of families that depend on the factory. Traces in these sites may reveal us to the 
degree of professionalism of workers, their schooling, or the absence of these objectives. During the archaeological recording of the electrical power station on Bovista Street in Lisbon, a red cross indicating the place of the first aid kit was reinvented as a symbol where a joke about the football club was written. It seems to have been made in the 90s uh, and a clear reference to the crisis of good results that this football club had during the decade was something uh, teasing a, someone teasing a colleague or just personally regretting preferences. Well, working in factories is an amazing opportunity to try to recreate human relations. The workers mark their passage by the working space, but also their presence in the gunpowder factory in Valtmiast. It is common to see the name of the worker, um, uh, the date when the, the work started, and their last day on the job. None of the workers did this, especially because many of them could not read or write. Um, other messages were recorded, uh, especially messages between shifts and sometimes even, incit even incitements. The workers in this factory were not hired based on in their professional experience. Um, a worker was hired only if someone from within the factory already knew him well and validated his good behavior. Uh, trust was more important than experience in this place. A stranger to the workers did not muster their confidence and would have serious trouble gaining his place in the labor chain. Danger was a cru crucial factor uh, in accepting relationships. But let's turn ourselves a little bit involved in this. This gunpowder factory started to work in 1896, closing in 2002. It was reopened as a museum in 2007. One of the former workers, Francisco Moura, became a museum employee. He maintains by himself a 1900 French steam engine that still works with a 1911 boiler of a Portuguese constructor. He knows this museum better than anyone. Not only was this, this the place where he and his brother played as, as children following their father to work, it was here where they started to work and became become employees of the factory. Knowing Francisco Mora's story is not only having direct information how was the life and daily activities of this factory where the powder was produced using steam energy <clears throat> until the 21st century, it is to understand how someone survives a working accident that left him in a coma for weeks, left scars all over his body, killed two of his friends, his dog, and changed his life forever. In spite of the bad memories, he realizes that telling his story is fundamental for researchers to understand how workers emotionally survive these accidents. Accidents were frequent, frequent in the factory. This first serious accident occurred in 1897 when several people were killed and many more injured due to an explosion. These accidents were highly explored by the local and regional newspapers with visual descriptions of the agony and how people died. Francisco tells similar stories. This is Francisco today, uh, 70 years, 17 years after the accident, and that jolly little fellow is my son. Hope he doesn't want to follow my footsteps as archaeologist. <laughs> Um, feelings are hard to find in an archaeological context, but in factory spaces they are even harder to find. If details that might seem insignificant are ignored, most of the time it is not understood that the most welcoming space of the factory is the changing rooms. This is where the lockers are, uh, with the belongings that connect the worker to the outside world and his personal life. They represent a connection to freedom. It is inside the locker that stands the photograph of his children, Again, the symbol of the football club, the calendar with the image of a girl showing nice physical attributes, all for a momentary decompression. Um, in the case of the ladies, it is in the locker that stands the image of a saint or the airbrush to brush her hair at the end of the day, not to look messy <laughs> on the way back home. This is where there is a needle and thread to hold the button, a burnt ointment, a cracker for the munchies. Um, the human component is easily forgotten. Symmetries, social differences, or inequalities outside of the chain are neglected. The relationship with the things, either photos, calendars, crosses, and the way that the objects influence human being back. Uh, by understanding them, we can reach or make connections about situations that do not arise in the documentation.
Workers wanted to leave their marks in the places where they worked, and only a multidisciplinary approach can study these relations with other works, but um, mostly with the space of the factory. In Szymbre, uh, in a mill, a Russian phrase was written. It simply says, I worked here. <laughs> uh, we will never know who this person was or in what year was the sentence written. It demonstrates the mobility of a worker far from his homeland, possibly too shy to leave his name to us, but who left a statement, a mark of his itinerary. Fortunately for the industrial archaeologist, many of the workers who passed the majority of their lives in these places are still alive. Part of what I do is to listen to the, the people, and especially out there personally related to the space, always trying to understand their personal relation with it and how they transformed it into a more bearable area. Humanizing industrial archaeology is a difficult task, not only because workers tend to take their belongings when they leave, but especially because uh, when these places are transformed into museums, it is an interest to clean the area and make it enjoyable for visitors. Thank you very much. <laughs>